Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm uh, inside the Juniper Stand in the huge Juniper Stand at Mobile mm-hmm. World Congress 2025. I'm with Rami Rahim, the CEO of Juniper. Rami, how's it going? It's going great. Thank you for yeah. having me, Zias. How's the event been so far? It has been wonderful. Busy, as always, yeah. but uh, a lot of really quality conversations with some uh, great customers and prospects. Yeah, um, so we're going to talk, obviously, AI, since that's what everybody talks about. Mm-hmm. I, I saw you on uh, Telecom TV or whatever the, the, the local stream inside here is, talking about AI for networking and networking for AI. And I think, um, I'm not sure the world yet understands the relative importance of the network to AI. Yeah. Um, certainly that hasn't shown up in the capital markets. Yeah. Uh, nor do I believe people really fully understand that the network needs to change. Yeah. Right? The way we deployed it in the past won't work. And so talk a little bit about that. Why, what is unique about AI and mm-hmm. why is the way we deployed networks in the past no longer sufficient? So it's a great question. You know, Juniper was born in the era of the internet, and uh, back then, we really had to innovate, push the limits of technology to be able to scale core and edge networks to meet the demands of the incredible growth that was happening on the internet back then. Fast forward to today, I kind of feel like there's been full circle. AI has resulted in a need to push the limits of technology all over again in networking. And more and more people are recognizing the importance of networking. I mean, look, AI AI GPUs, um, one, two, 10, barely do anything. Now add hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and pretty soon they're gonna be connecting millions in these super clusters. And now the attributes of the network become absolutely critical. And so we are having to go to new technologies like liquid cooling, co-packaged optics. These things are kind of nice to have until now, but in the not so distant future, they're gonna be absolutely must have. It's an exciting time to be in this industry. It's an exciting time to be in networking. Yeah, I, I think that's, uh, uh, that's true. And in fact, um, I was watching uh, Jensen's keynote, the CEO of NVIDIA from CES, where he was talking about how the next wave of AI is actually physical AI, yeah. where everything that's autonomous will eventually move. And I was thinking about, uh, or everything that moves will be autonomous. And I was thinking about the network implications of that, yeah. just the massive number of more connections that we're going to have. Correct. Yeah. Well, there's massive number of more connections and capacity to be satisfied within the data center, connecting these GPUs together in back-end networks. But then there's also just the massive capacity you need in the wide area to connect data centers together and to connect uh, AI applications to the consumers of those applications. Today, much of the investment, as you know, has been in big learning data centers, the large uh, model builders. But I think in the not so distant future, we're going to talk about inferencing and inferencing is going to happen at the edge. It's going to happen on premises. And so the connections for these large inferencing data centers is going to have to be built. Yeah. So it's, it's fair to say that the network's never been more important. Yes. Right. And what that does, I think, is it not only do we have to change the way we build them, but the way we run them. Yes. And I know you've been a big proponent of AI for networking. Yes. Uh, well, even before I think we started using the term. Yes. Yeah, and so talk about the vision there and how we eventually get to this easy button for networking. Yeah. So I think Juniper is really a pioneer in AI for networks, right? Leveraging artificial intelligence to simplify the day-to-day operations of those networks, to simplify the life of those network heroes that have to keep their networks up, running, and serving their yeah. users all the time, and to delight the end user, right? To do practically anything over the network today. And I believe there are like really three key ingredients that make a, a network into an actual AI native network. It's sort of an overused term, but we wanted to crisply define it. The first is you must have the right data. You must have not just the data that tells you whether the network elements are up, but how your users are experiencing the network in real time. Are my users actually happy? Second is you need to have a proven cloud, a cloud architecture that scales from the smallest to the largest of deployments. That's easier said than done. You need true cloud scale architectures to make that happen. Last but not least, you need to have an accurate response. Okay, and I think some of our peers sort of stop at the observability yeah. and they fail to understand the importance of actually deriving insight from that de- observability and translating that insight into actions that achieve real outcomes for the end user. 
crushing the number of trouble tickets, reducing the time to deployment of new tech networks or new services, um, reducing the time to understanding where issues happen and how to remediate them. These are the kinds of things that we're driving with our missed AI native networks each and every day. Yeah, networking, and I'm a former network engineer, so I will say that uh, from personal experience, you almost thrive in complexity, Yeah. right? And uh, uh, although, you, if you translate that, that on the AR, everybody talks about how expensive GPU cycles are, things like that. Now, all of a sudden, that extra complexity that adds to downtime, that leads to long troubleshooting times, yes. that could cost companies real money, right? Oh, my yeah. God. Well, uh, certainly it can cause companies to spend way more to deal with complexity, to deal with downtime. But you mentioned something that's really important, which is GPU cycles. I mean, right now, for anybody that's building, learning, or inference data centers, the most precious asset are those really, really expensive yeah. GPUs. Yeah. Any downtime for a GPU or any inefficiency that's caused by congestion inside of a network is evil. And so we are having to leverage automation principles, high performance networks, low latency networks to alleviate and basically eliminate the the potential of any congestion. And that's something that we've done both with the industry's first 800 gigabit ethernet routing and switching products, but also in some new really innovative capabilities we introduce into our data center automation suite that helps us understand where congestion might occur for specific workloads and then configures the network dynamically to alleviate that congestion. Now, one of the things I've always liked about Juniper is the strength both on the SP and the enterprise side. And Mobile World Congress, I think, for the most part, is a service by the show. When you think of the transition to AI networking, um, what are some of the similarities you see between enterprises and service providers and, and the differences? So, all of the above, enterprise, service providers, cloud providers, all are in the business of providing ubiquitous connectivity, but there are differences, as you suggest. Um, enterprises tend to not have the technical IT staff to deal with a lot of complexity in their networks. Service providers don't just do connectivity, they rely on their networks for service delivery. Cloud providers have obviously leveraged and harnessed the power of the cloud, but they're dealing with massive scale, right? The scale problems they have to solve is just stunning. Um, but that being said, uh, since this is a service provider uh, focused show still, for the most part, I think both AI for networks and networks for AI play a very important role for service providers. In AI for networks, if you look at just the complexity that service providers have to deal with and the cost that goes into running their networks, I believe the days of looking at AI as a nice to have are over, they're behind us. They must leverage AI in order to run their networks efficiently uh, and effectively. And then also for Networks for AI, I sincerely hope, and much of the conversations we're having, we're having in this show is around making sure that service providers don't miss this trend as a revenue generating opportunity. And so we have rolled out an AI as a service, GPU as a service, um, architecture for service providers that really make it very simple for them to roll out these kinds of new age services to generate new revenue, revenue yeah. streams for themselves. And we're hopeful that there will be a few operators that can lead and set an example for the rest. I want to shift gears a little bit to intent-based networking. Yeah. Now, um, that, that was a term that got pretty widely used for a while. It seems to have faded a little bit. Um, I actually think that it was uh, at a Juniper Enterprise Prize event where mm -hmm. I first heard the term. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, Juniper was an early adopter of yes. that. How's that been going and what kind of traction are you seeing there? So it's a good question. You know, our foray into intent-based networking really started when we acquired this great uh, company, had a great product called Abstra. Yeah. Um, Abstra is a truly unique solution in a few ways. First, it's the first truly data center infrastructure agnostic solution. So it works equally well irrespective of what underlying uh, infrastructure switches, security uh, routing that you have. Second, it operates at a level of abstraction that truly simplifies the day-to-day -day operations of a network. It, that's what intent means. You sort of provide business logic, high-level intent on what you're trying to achieve, and it does the nitty-gritty details of ensuring that the network is always operating to the intent that you set. Third, it is the quickest time to insight 
in any solution that we've seen mm -hmm. out there. So it's truly differentiated. Now we've had this is a little bit of inside baseball, a little bit of debate inside the company about if you've got this intent-based networking, it's very necessarily a deterministic solution, do you also need AI ops? And what we discovered is actually there's room for both. AI ops is really good at understanding issues that sort of are day zero issues. They've never happened before. Like they could be a fan issue in a switch that's never sort of happened before. And you're detecting anomalies and truly understanding where those anomalies are gonna uh, affect uh, the service and ultimately do something about it proactively. So what we've done is we've started to seamlessly integrate our intent-based networking and our missed AI ops together in a solution that's all sort of one package for our customers. We did this just recently, like a, a few quarters ago, and the demand has been incredible, way ahead of our expectations. So that's gonna be the strategy that we're gonna to continue to execute on. Yeah, no, I can see that. I, I think you should go hand in hand. Yeah. In fact, I would, I would uh, imagine that uh, AI for networking would discover some insights, yeah. perhaps that in, intent-based wouldn't, but yeah. then Using intent-based, you'd be able to remediate against whatever that is, and yes. so it's not yeah. an or; it's an yeah, end. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. Now, uh, the other area of strength that Juniper's always had is security. Yep. How does the AI networking fit into that? So, you know, day zero attacks don't do well for sort of traditional signature-based security methodologies. You need data. You need AI. Okay, the bad guys leverage AI all the time. The good guys yeah. also have to. <laughs> Leverage data. Now Fight think fire about with fire, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And if you think about what I just said earlier around the critical ingredients of AI networks, the or AI native networks, the first is the right data. So we are already, as part of our MIST AI platform, collecting massive amounts of useful information that can be used for a host of reasons, right? Delighting the end user with an assured experience. But we can also delight the end user with a secure experience as well. And that's the strategy that we're embarking on. We're gonna leverage that MIST platform to seamlessly integrate security and tap into the rich uh, network and user experience data to make sure that we give the bad guys the hardest time to do their dirty work. Yeah, do you think also that, um, you know, this concept of bringing security and networking together is something, uh, I remember writing about this when I was in Yankee Group like 20 years ago. Yes. And for the most part, it's been a solution looking for a problem. Yeah. Uh, do you think with the rise of AI and the importance that security plays that this will be finally the thing that actually brings security and AI together, or security and networking so, together? I, you know, I believe in that as an eventual outcome, irrespective of AI, to be honest. Yeah. It has I, to happen, right? It, well, think about it. No security threat can succeed without leveraging the network. Right? Yeah. I mean, the network is the way that bad guys get to the resources that they want to steal, okay? Yeah. Or the disruption that they want to cause. Well, it's lateral movement, right? Absolutely. That's what you want. Yeah. And so, you, it, like you just said, fight fire with fire. You must leverage the network to basically create the best overall security posture. This is why, for our customers that leverage the MIST platform, Instantiating a security device at the edge in the cloud is as simple as a click of a button. That has to be the case. And now you can have the right security detection capabilities across the network, but then equally so the right blocking capabilities at the right part of the network so you're not causing too much disruption. There is one other element of security I just want to mention that AI, I think, has caused us to, like, has caused us to rethink, and that's around performance. So many customers did it now are dealing with such an increase in traffic in their networks, data center interconnect, inside the data center, um, out into the wide area, that traditional next generation firewalls are just not keeping up. They're literally falling over from the volumes of traffic. For that reason, for the last couple of years, we've been hard at work and we've literally around the corner from shipping the world's fastest firewall, mm -hmm. the SRX 4700, to solve exactly that problem in the age of AI. Yeah, I also think that it's funny because AI has brought on-prem security back yeah. as well into the data center, right? And for a while, it seemed like everybody wanted to move all their security to the cloud. Well, that was fine when everything, your data was in the cloud, yeah. but with all the the volume of data people use to train and, you know, the, the they're, they're just dealing with a lot more data. It makes no sense to move it to the cloud and back. And so, yeah. Well, I, when you're talking about a data yeah. center, on-prem security is the data center. Yeah, it's the yeah, cloud yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that is the strategy. Yeah. 
All right, Rami, anything else you want to add? I think that we covered it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got the AI native networking for security, yeah. for intent-based networking. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, over time you'll start to see SP enterprise networks managed, not identical, but I think there'll be some common traits as well. Well, I think eventually both service providers and enterprises are going to get more and more comfortable taking their hands off the steering wheel. Yeah. Just like with our self-driving cars today, it takes a little bit of an adjustment. I think this is happening right now across the board, across all of our customers. Yeah. Well, it takes a long time to prove it. In fact, mm -hmm. I think uh, you would know that from personal experience. The Mist AI engine has been best in class for a long time, but mm -hmm. getting people to trust it to do things automatically is an entirely different thing. It, it can take a little bit of time, but yeah. the pace at which new customers are embracing it and trusting it yeah. um, is it's amazing. It's, a, it's yeah. fun to compete in the yeah. industry today. All right. Uh, well, congratulations on the product launch, and I uh, hope you have a good show. Thank you so much, Dave. Yeah. So Appreciate on, it. On behalf of Rami Rahim, the CEO of Juniper Networks, I'm Zias Caraval from CK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of CCAST.